So, with countries like Trinidad and Tobago experience, experiencing as many as 10 earthquakes in a matter of weeks, the concern levels have been raised as many worry about a big earthquake um, hitting the region. This morning, Professor Simon Mitchell, head of the Department of Geography and Geology at the, the UA Mona, will have a little chat with us. Morning, sir. Welcome Good morning. To Smile Jamaica. I asked the question before you came on. Let's go to Trinidad and Tobago, the fact that they've had... 10 relatively small ones, does that necessarily mean that they should be concerned well, that they might have a big one? Well, there was a big one just north of Venezuela, which was the 6.9, which is the one that caused the damage in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. and, and you saw pictures of that damage, and you know, various people have gone out and had a look at that damage. But what it has done is it's brought up the fact that we do have quite a lot of earthquakes all the time in the Caribbean. All the time? All the time. What does that mean? Well... We are the whole. The edge of the Caribbean is a plate boundary, so what that really means is that that plate boundary is moving. So one plate is moving against another plate, and every time it moves a little bit in one place or another place, it gives us an earthquake. That's normal, by the way. The that's movement. normal. That's okay. normal, and that's been going on for millions of years, and it will keep going on for yeah. millions of years. So, so Trinidad has has had ten. Mm -hmm. In what space of time was it? Like it's about the last two, two, uh, two or three weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. So, but the big <laughs> one, the big one was one really has brought it up. So, I mean, if you were watching last year, you would have seen they had some last year as well felt mm -hmm. ones. So, these things are ongoing. Um, it's just when you get the one big one that really does actually bring it home to you that it becomes very much into the news. What number constitutes a big one? Well, really, once we start talking about above five, above? we start talking about something that is more problematic. That, if it is located in a country and it's relatively shallow, is probably going to do some damage mm. somewhere. Um, so, I mean, that one we heard about in Haiti was just above five. Um, and remember, it's not a linear scale. It's a logarithmic scale. What so does that mean? Going from five to six is ten times as worse. Okay. So it's five to six is ten times, six to seven is another ten times, that's a hundred But you times. said that we have fives. We do have fives, yes. In Jamaica? Yes. So how come we don't... Well, we do. We do feel some of them. I, I mean, felt one well, two five weeks ago, my bed yeah, did that. But if five is one. big, I mean, well, you're not supposed it to do everything. Well, it depends where it is. I mean, if it's a good way away, um, the actual waves decrease in there sort of size as they move away from the epicenter. So, number one, it could be offshore, and the right. bigger ones we've had have been right. offshore, so that by the time they get to us, they're not such a problem. Right. Um, or they can be quite deep. I mean, they can go down to about 30 kilometers here. So, you know, before they get to us, they go through mm -hmm. 30 kilometers of rock. Absorb some of the shock. And of course, some of that, yes, yeah, <clears throat> gets, gets basically, the, the, the energy gets dissipated so that we don't get so much. Yeah. How much of this um, has to do with climate change? Nothing. Really? Absolutely nothing. Yes, climate change. That's is a not huge myth because people are like, "Oh, it's so hot. No. Something's going to happen." No, it's no, not. It's too the one thing that isn't, um, or is very, very little association. There are places where, for instance, if you fill a reservoir up with water, a very big reservoir, and you load the crust, then that can cause an earthquake. But so it's got to be something big. It's not. Just, just changing the temperature isn't going to do anything. Mm -hmm. So we're Tell not really again. looking at that. Tell me that again. So you, if you fill up a bigger reservoir, yeah. okay, you're putting a lot of water in there, it's a lot of weight. Okay, if you've got a fault nearby, that fault can be put under increased stress and it can actually cause a, an earthquake. Okay. I mean, some of the other earthquakes that are caused, of course, you, you've heard about fracking, yes. where they pump down basically fluids to release hydrocarbons. Oh, okay. Well, this is another thing, because you're pumping those fluids in there, they get into the fault zones and they cause earthquakes. And so areas where you're getting fracking going on, Oklahoma, for instance. Looking for oil, eh? Yeah, you're getting, getting it, but mm -hmm. you increase the number of earthquakes. Right, okay. And so there's a theory that I heard that they, it's good to have little ones because that's, that's good release and decreases the chances of a huge hit. Is that true? It's not necessarily true, and it's, it's one of the problems we have is that we all we get very frequent little earthquakes. Um, most of them you do not feel. So, for instance, in the Jamaican region, we get something like 80 to 120 a year. What's that? Of which <laughs> we, we get feel. 80 to 120 earthquakes <laughs> yeah, every year. Every year. Jamaica does? Jamaica does. 
Yeah. That's just the local threes ones, yeah. And, and... Yeah, twos yeah. and threes and... From this I'm up that you're smiling through this. <laughs> you are... But they do, but I mean, this is the natural way that the world works. Yeah, this is attributed to you, I, I hope. Yeah. It says, if we see little earthquakes, it means mm. that Jamaica is deforming and it's moving. Yeah. And we're not seeing the big one building up. Well, that's we're actually that saying that the small ones... That is a possibility that, that we, we are releasing stress. But there is a second thing you can think about as well, and that is that when you get a little earthquake, it moves the stress from that fault, and it might push it onto a different one. And so, you, you know, we talk about aftershocks. Everybody heard of aftershocks. There's also what we call pre-shocks, where you actually get some earthquakes before. That pushes it onto one big fault line and that fault line moves. But you're suggesting in it. this one that well, the little tremors is a good thing. Certainly when we had the 1993 earthquake, we stopped having smaller earthquakes for a little while. How much was that one again? That one was about a five point, I think it was 5.1 or 4. Never 2. forget that one. I was at um, Immaculate at the time yeah. and the building was doing and this. And so, yeah, I think if we see little ones, we like stress being released, but of course it can lead to a bigger one being stressed. And we will have a big one one day. We will. We will. There's no doubts we will. Well, why? why? Why are you thinking that? Well, because we have big faults. We have long faults. Um, we know those faults are capable of moving and generating earthquakes up to about a 7.5, 7.2. And we've seen them before. In we've this case, when you say we will have a big one, a big one would be sevens? Six? Sevens, yeah. So high sixes to sevens is quite possible. Does science Jamaica. allow you to guess the probability of a timeline that we're looking well, at within the next 10 years, five years? Well, we can't really say that. That's one of the biggest problems. Predicting earthquakes is an extremely difficult yeah. thing to do, and nobody has worked out a good way yet. We're getting closer. I mean, maybe Can you get years. closer? I didn't look faster, <laughs> please. <laughs> um, we would like to, because, yeah. I mean, everybody is concerned about it. If we things. do get hit, God forbid, is there mm -hmm. anywhere in Jamaica that would... in in a, I don't know if it's studies or what, that would be impacted more than other areas? Yes, there will be. Um, probably the bigger faults are on the south side of Jamaica. So it's probably the south so side. Weird, no. So where, where Kingston, so Portmore, so where a lot of the people are. Um, but that doesn't mean there haven't been big earthquakes elsewhere. I mean, in 1957, there was an earthquake called the Montego Bay earthquake, and certainly some churches and buildings collapsed. Why would that. it hit the areas that you suggested if it it's did? It's really how close you are to some significant faults. Oh, nice. And these fault lines are the ones that they don't move for a long time and when they do move because they're long fault lines. And effectively if you've got a very long fault it has the capability of rupturing over a big distance and giving a big earthquake. So based so. on what you said, mm -hmm. can't predict what, yeah. do we need, what do we need to know to keep ourselves safe? Well, I think what we need to do is we need, to, we need to plan <laughs> for things. So mm -hmm. you know you're going to uh, one day be feeling an earthquake. Well, probably most people have felt an earthquake recently because we've been doing that. So really what you want to do is to think about your house and where are the safe places in your house. And we recommend that you, you get onto something that can protect you. Mm -hmm. a, a good table is a good idea because... Tables, wooden tables, a solid wooden table is great because it, it, it's got springiness to it. Wood, wood bends and doesn't just crack. So um, getting onto something like that, holding on to it, is an important thing. The important things to do for yourself is cover your head. If you can't get under that, cover your head. Your head is the most precious mm -hmm. part of your body you've got. So if something hits your head, you've got a problem. So hands over the head is a good idea. So what you want to do is to plan that talk to the people in your house, where are the safe places in your house, you can get there. These little ones we've been feeling are short, okay, they're a few seconds. When you get a big one, that can go on for minutes. For a minute? Or minutes. Minutes? Yes. So if you Boy, immediately Professor make Samuel. that move to a safest place, you're going to have a better chance of surviving. Is running outside a good idea? If you can get outside, getting outside is a good idea because less things can fall on you. If you're outside already, you move away from a building, you, anything that can fall on you. If you're by the sea and you feel a big earthquake, you move away from the sea, because for the waves. obvious reasons, the waves. tsunamis. Tsunami. And of course, today, 
is actually International Tsunami Day. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> okay, so again, we need to be promoting about this. Ah. So if you feel a big earthquake, what you must do is move away from the sea. Don't think about it. Don't go and look. Move immediately. Well, Professor Simon, you're the first guest. I hope don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> At least for a while. Please. Well, I, I hope I don't need to. Let's put it like that. All right, let me ask Ooh. a personal um, opinion now. What do you mm. think? What do you think from what's been happening in the region? What, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think, I think at the moment we, we've just seen a series of earthquakes going around. They're not significantly different to what we normally expect. Um, uh, I don't think it's something that people should be concerned that it's going to you know, going to happen tomorrow. Of course, it could happen tomorrow. It's more likely it's going to be 10, 20, 30 years in the future. It will happen at some point. Um, we can't predict it. But I think the, the key thing with all of these things is make sure you're prepared. Yeah, but we haven't had a, a major one since 1907. No. So why do you think that's more than 100 years ago? Why do you think well, it's going to happen pretty if soon? if the stress is building up on one of these fault lines, eventually it's going to move. And if you think back, you go back 1692, 1907, mm -hmm. well, we've had guess. 100 years. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> If that fault is building up stress, it could move at some point. And that's why urban planning is so important. Well, this is the other thing. It's very important that we make sure that building codes are adhered to. New, and then they affect the new buildings. They don't necessarily affect what we built, and that's one of the big problems. Mm -hmm. We can go back in and we can strengthen buildings if they're considered weak. Uh, we know so much more about the way we can build today. We know so, so much more about how we can look at the land that's around and make sure what's there is going to withstand yeah. the sorts of earthquakes. When you heard recently about our 20-story buildings. Um. Well, this is a concern. And um, when you're actually starting to think about building very high rises, you've got to look at what the period of those buildings is. In other words, how they shake. And you see, it's, it's a bit like a jello. If you get to jello and you, you shake it very quickly, it doesn't do much. But if you actually get it just right, you can make it wobble off. And that's exactly what a building does. And therefore, if the waves coming up have that same frequency, your building collapses. So what you've got to do is you've got to make sure in your design of your buildings that you're building buildings that don't have frequencies that relate to the frequency of the waves that are coming up. So the out. buildings can actually sway. Yeah. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We don't mind if they sway. We don't want them to fall down. Correct. And we don't want them too close together. Because, you see, if they sway... Yeah they can crash into each other. Yeah. So yeah, a, lot, a lot about design of buildings is very important in an earthquake-prone country. Yeah. Prof, I don't even know if I must say thanks for coming, but I shall. Thanks for coming, sir. Okay. <laughs> You're most I, welcome. I, I won't say <laughs> 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 Professor Simon Mitchell, head of the Department of Geography and Geology at the UEMONA on Earthquakes in the Caribbean.